In this video, we are going to be talking about how to create complicated cardboard craft. The first thing that you need to do when you are doing this is step one, visualize your project. And uh, when you're visualizing, you are just drawing it out. And that's basically what uh, I'm talking about here. Don't get it confused with other kinds of like visualization. But when you do this, you uh, evaluate the problem that you're trying to solve or a, your goal, whether uh, you're trying to just create like a prop or something that looks cool, kind of like this uh, Star Wars gun above me, or uh, maybe you're trying to create something more functional like a shelf, and then in that case, you'd be more aiming towards like a problem to solve. Uh, and then you're considering what materials that you can use for this, because obviously we're going to be using cardboard, but uh, what other materials could you uh, use that could be more beneficial, whether you want to integrate like some PVC pipe or little other other trinkets that are better for that kind of thing and then you're also gonna want to draw a rough picture of the craft or model that you're trying to create and then you're gonna iterate on that drawing until it accomplishes the purpose or looks really good uh, for what you want so when you're trying to draw this you draw out something uh, quite simple and then <clears throat> as you see problems in it because you can look down on the paper and uh, you look at what needs to change I've got an example right here you can see I was designing like a little ring holder and I went through a bunch of iterations to try and find the right thing uh, in the right way so it starts out a lot simpler and then you build your way up it gets more and more complicated uh, as you go uh, into that or maybe it gets more simple uh, and that could be a good thing but you're just simplifying it and um, uh, making it look better and that is your visualization so you're you're coming up with the form of the model and all the features that it needs to get where you want it to go and get it to look that way here's a, a picture of uh, of a model that I was creating this wasn't for creating with cardboard I was gonna 3d print this but that's just a visualization of what it's gonna look like you can see there's no like dimensions on it but it shows all the features that it's going to need here's another picture of like a little toy thing that I was trying to create and visualize and that is just a there we go now it's going all right my slides are going nuts so that's just a picture right there of uh, what it's going to look like and I couldn't like create something directly from that but it gives me an idea of how I want it to look but hey if we're just meeting my name is Eli Tennant and this is maker brain and I've been crafting with cardboard for years and created everything from monitor stands to toy prop Star Wars guns and it's my passion to help you access and implement your creativity through cardboard DIY projects and with that let's get on to the next step for creating complex cardboard models and that is going to be to dimension your drawing or what you, you the, the visualization picture that you made of your part so you take that final visualization the, the final picture that you created and then you use that to uh, use that to pull the dimensions off of and and uh, create something more usable that uh, has a more of a real-world application it isn't quite as abstract anymore so that is uh, the dimensioning part and you're gonna add notes to this as well again you can see over here I have a lot of notes on this uh, other one there's just tons they are all bubbled in everywhere notes 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 because I can't create a perfect shape in my like 2d sketchbook a lot of the time there are little notes that I need to put in there to remind myself of things and sometimes they don't even make any sense to other people here is the monitor stand that I made and uh, my slides are taking a while to transition, but there, there's a 45 degree angle and then a channel for the fold because uh, you can't see that in the model right by the channel for the fold. And that is boom. So you can see right here that I've got this channel fold. And that means something to me. You can click on a video right up here in the corner if you want to watch a video on how to fold cardboard. But that channel fold... Uh, it's just a note to myself and I then I also have all the dimensions on here in addition to those notes and then also here is another note that's gonna be very important if you're working with cardboard that is the grain direction I like to indicate it with these little dashes but the different directions that your grain is facing makes a big difference in how functional your model is so make sure you pay attention to that when you're dimensioning your model and if you are doing uh, something that's like has practical purposes or is being integrated with other things you're gonna make sure that you measure the things that it's interacting with uh, and get your dimensions off of that so that it 
actually fits and the the figure out as much as you can in the planning phase uh, and that that's the uh, visualization phase that we were just talking about as well as this dimensioning phase if you can figure out all that a ton of stuff during this step those two steps step number one and two then you run into fewer issues later when you're trying to make stuff uh, out of the cardboard and you're like cutting it out and gluing it together because you've already done all that on paper and you, can, you run into some of those issues ahead of time, which is really good so you don't have to uh, remake your models. But step number three is to lay out your cardboard model. And for this one, you want to... Uh, when you're laying out your cardboard model, you're drawing the cardboard model onto a, another piece, uh, onto your cardboard. So you take those dimensions and then transfer them over to the cardboard, and then you can repeat and trace parts to save time. So if I'm going to be creating like five of the same part, I'll make one, make sure it's really nice. I'm like using my ruler to get like a straight edge and nice and accurate, and then I just repeat that so I trace it like four more times and then cut out all of those that saves a lot of time when you're doing that and then you can also make sure that uh, your size will be accurate once you create the model that's a big one we'll get into that in just a second but uh, last little thing here you still want to add dimensions for little things so when in the dimension phase we did not put dimensions for every tiny little thing we're gonna add a few more while we're laying it out and here's a picture that I hope is gonna be helpful we have uh, the part of a monitor stand that I made and the thing about this is I designed it in my notebook and then I looked and I'm laying it out here so these little gaps of two lines are all areas where I am compensating for the size of my cardboard so that when I fold it the dimensions are gonna stay the same because all the dimensions that I put into my notebook aren't necessarily going to be helpful for when I fold the cardboard because they are like overall dimensions and don't apply to what I am doing right there and so I'm gonna show you right on this other screen we've got that same monitor stand but I went through all the phases so here I'm iterating on it I went through this pretty quickly because I'm getting good at it and then I like cream up with another design and then I came up with the last design and added the dimensions and then when I'm laying but those dimensions aren't all the same as the ones in the layout because the layout has to compensate for like the eighth inch cardboard so that when I fold it it all comes out to the right size and all that is to say there are, uh, there are some interesting ways to fold cardboard but they like change the distance because you're like adding or subtracting cardboard or even when you glue cardboard together if I just take two pieces of cardboard and uh, glue them s one side onto the other then they're gonna be overlapping so if I tried to make a one inch square and I just had six one inch pieces of cardboard I wouldn't actually be able to glue all the sides together because some of them would like in order to glue them you have to overlap and then once you try to glue all of them together the the box wouldn't be exactly one inch around because the cardboard width would be making a difference there so pay attention to the cardboard thickness you can, you can see in this picture right here I uh, am in this picture it has the compensation built into there for those folds and then down here it actually says cover as well and what that means is that area is going to get covered and then the compensation for that I added in up there so it's just kind of you keep changing things but step number four is the assembly of your creation so you're assembling it you're cutting out those pieces now and putting it all together and this is how you create these complex cardboard models you kind of take it in steps and you think ahead of time on paper just like that what we were just talking about but uh, and you lay it out but uh, you can cut the shapes you cut the shapes put them together and sometimes oftentimes this happens during the f the layout phase because you have to uh, test fit things and uh, get stuff to work together and also especially if it's a big creation you'll definitely need to create it like one part at a time and work off of that base that you've been creating to uh, fit stuff in that way uh, if it's like a big really complex creation that uh, is functional and maybe more a little like square shaped then that's a little bit different than if it's like a freestyle model like this like Mandalorian prop gun that I made where I just looked at some reference images and kinda guesstimated everything and it turned out okay but I still laid stuff out on cardboard and uh, pulled some dimensions to make sure everything worked well uh, it for this I didn't lay out everything and then glue it all together because when you try to do 
all your laying out and all your dimensioning at one time, things don't usually turn out quite uh, the way you expect because uh, the dimensions kind of like overlap each other and it just doesn't work super well. Uh, as an example, that monitor stand I, oops, that I keep talking about, uh, it ended up being a little too big for the monitor. It still barely fit, but it was a little too big just because I hadn't compensated all like the tolerances and dimensions. They didn't all fit together perfectly. I should have test fitted things a little more more and put these two steps together of layout and assembly uh, here is the a picture of that monitor stand with the pieces laid out uh, and cut out and then there's a few more things to do where it's gonna get folded but step number five is to refine your model and refining can be a really fun step for some people and other people like to skip it but this is where you're just adding little things to the end of your project and that could be covering the edges of the cardboard or you could be adding extra hot glue or painting it and all of those are different ways to refine the model but pretty much no matter what you do I recommend refining it in a little bit of a way whether you're just adding a little extra reinforcing hot glue to things that you tacked on earlier or covering up the edges of the cardboard that's a really big one to make it look professional and I'll link videos as always videos and resources down in the description below because there's all kinds of things uh, up to working with cardboard there's also a whole playlist down there about working with cardboard I'll link it up in the card right here as well but my name's Eli Tennant this is Maker Brain and I'll see you in another video god bless so check out this video for cardboard basics and check out this video for how to design a cardboard project see you in another video